Thank you, Governor Christie. Thank you, Josh. Our partner in this debate, the Independent Journal Review, has collected questions from some prominent conservatives around the country. Here's a videotaped question from radio host Larry O'Connor. In 2008, we saw how motivated an electorate can be when they think their vote is making history. Let's face it, if Hillary Clinton is the nominee for the Democrats, you'll be running against the prospect of the first woman president. How will you change that narrative and motivate the electorate behind your candidacy? Well, Mr. Trump, I'm going to give that question to you. You, yes. took it, you took it away anyway. Oh, okay, good. It looked like he was looking right at me right there. Uh, I think that... I look at what's going on. I look at all of the polls. I do very, very well against Hillary Clinton. I can tell you I'm the last person that she wants to run against. And I think you can see what we've done in terms of galvanizing. I've, I've been all over the country. We're, uh, last night, I was in South Carolina. We had 12,000 people. It's set up in about four days. We have galvanized, and we've created a movement. A lot of it has to do with, as an example, Josh's question on drugs. I'm the first one that said, build a wall. But I mean a real wall, not a toy wall like they have right now. A real wall. And you'll solve lots of problems. But we will galvanize the people of this country, and we will beat Hillary Clinton. Because assuming that she runs, by the way, how she gets away with the email stuff is hard to believe. So I don't know that she's going to be running. But on the assumption she runs, I mean, look... And speaking of that, if she runs, she's running for one reason. She's going to be able to run for one reason, and that's because the Democrats are protecting her. Because so many people have done so much less than her, and they were absolutely, their lives have been destroyed. But on the assumption they do protect her, I will win the election, and we will win it by a lot. We will win it handily. We cannot have another four years of essentially Barack Obama. Martha. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Trump. I'm going to go to Senator Rubio on this. How would you change that narrative? I think it's already happening. Look at the turnout in Iowa. A historic number of people came out and voted in those caucuses. They're saying the same thing's going to happen here in New Hampshire. Look at the rallies that every single person on the stage is having. Much higher numbers than you used to see in the past. And here's why. Because people are starting to understand very clearly that this election is going to be a turning point. That 2016 is not just a choice between Republican or Democrat. It is a referendum on our identity as a nation and as a people. And so here's what Hillary Clinton needs to understand. We're going to have our primary. We're going to have our debates, which, by the way, are twice as many as the Democrats have been willing to have themselves. But we're going to bring this party together. And we are going to defeat Hillary Clinton because she is unqualified to be the president of the United States of America. She put classified information on her computer because she thinks she's above the law. And anyone who lies to the families of people who have lost their loved ones in the service of our country, like she did in Benghazi, can never be the commander in chief of the United States of America. Thank you, Senator Rubio. Martha. Dr. Carson, I want to go to you on Larry O'Connor's question. Would you change the narrative? We, it's the same question? Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, I think it would be a pretty easy contrast, uh, quite frankly, between myself and Hillary Clinton. Uh, in one case, you have someone who is known as a deceitful individual, uh, an individual who Ed Benghazi, which I will never let go, quite frankly, because I think of those uh, two men who went up there on the top of that compound with machine guns, firing away, uh, allowing their colleagues to escape. And I'm sure in the back of their mind they were just saying, if we can just hold on, help is on the way. But help was not on the way. When did we in the United States not send people to help our own people? You know, this is not who we are. And... I would 